Good evening, PAC members. Um, this will be our last LCAP PAC meeting of the year. So I wanted to say aloha to bring some of that aloha spirit to our meeting this evening. Um, yeah, thanks, Heather. <laughs> um, so uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to get through our meeting as quick as possible. We have a, a, a lot of important things on our agenda this evening. Many of them uh, that have we have to vote on and have some great discussion. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, more of our members will uh, be in attendance and attendance is one of those things as well. So um, if our board liaison, Saul, if you have anything that you'd like to share this evening or Melissa. Well, I just would like to welcome everybody uh, here. Um, it, it is the last meeting and uh, I appreciate all your efforts and I'm hoping that we could uh, work together and prepare ourselves for next year. But uh, you know, we're onward and forward. So thank you all for being here tonight. Thank you, Saul. Thank well, you, and I just want to build on that. And I'm, I'm very grateful for all the time that our members have spent with us this year. So I want to first start with my appreciation for the work that you've done and for your dedication um, to our district and to our students and families. And, and then I just want to share with you, we, we had a great close to the school year last year and or last week feels like it was a year ago because we just started summer school. So, you know, when one thing ends, there's another thing that begins. And um, so this week we started our high school programs. And so that included our credit recovery programs for, and it's, um, we have an in-person program as well as an independent study program. And so um, for this semester, so there's two semesters to summer school for high school. And this first semester, we have a thousand students in seats right currently. We have 2,400 students overall registered for both semesters, and we have another 2,000 students that are registered in the independent study. So the good news is, is that this opportunity is, um, it, our students are utilizing this opportunity as a, a road to credit recovery or grade improvement. And so um, it's a very positive, it's a very positive um, situation. And then also we started our, some of our elementary programs, our camp invention programs also started. Um, and so there's a variety, um, there continues to be a variety of summer school programs that are offered this summer. And those have all been made afforded through our one-time funds. So it's allowed us to really expand the work that we do so that students get intervention, but they also get some enrichment opportunities and just time to connect with others to continue to build those relationships and connections. Um, so it's it's going to be yet again another busy summer, but um, it's really exciting to see our students and our families um, taking um, these opportunities and, and running with it. So that's all I got. Thank you. Let's add a question with the independent study. What grade levels is that for? It's for high school. So okay. it's for um, ninth grade and up. Okay. And, and the, um, the other summer school programs, um, were they more of like the camp invention or did they have any um, programs for students um, within elementary and, and uh, middle school that would help them as well with, um, with grades, with in grade improvement? So um, within camp invention, there is an intervention component that does help students around um, skill building with reading, particularly with literacy. So that is um, already embedded inside of that. Um, students in elementary don't really need to work towards grade improvement, but they do need to work towards um, mastery of standards. So that is included in camp invention. Um, and then for middle school, there is some emphasis on that, but again, grade, grade improvement it's more mastery of skill and standard. And so they're, they have a robust enrichment opportunity for middle school students. We were really trying to build that love of learning and love of school. Um, so there's some really unique um, course offerings that are happening that are just kind of outside of the box, um, anywhere from uh, uh, exciting like creative writing um, courses to um, makers type courses that involve Legos and robots and stuff. Okay. Um, what we can do is we can uh, provide a more comprehensive report when we return in the fall so that you can kind of get a glimpse of everything that um, occurred over the summer. Well, that's awesome. Thank yeah. Well, and one more thing, we, we did um, embark on a partnership utilizing our one-time funds with the Aerospace Museum. So we have about 300 students, um, particularly from high-density schools that are participating in camps 
at Aerospace, um, their week-long camp. So we have, um, even outside of San Juan, we have other partnerships that are also serv servicing our students. Okay. And then how did families get the information for these camps? They get the information through their school sites. So um, we work with the schools. So particularly for Aerospace, we did an um, intensive outreach um, effort at um, very, um, so high priority, high density okay. schools. Okay. Um, so the, the outreach happened more at the school level. Okay, the high density schools, specifically to the Aerospace. Okay, yeah. thank you. Ms. Brown, Ms. Brown, if I can say one more thing. Yes. Um, we, when we gave our notices this year to uh, our teachers, uh, all of them are, have a job returning for next coming year except one. And the reason why that's one is because the credential that that teacher had uh, didn't qualify for the job that was open. So, but we're working with that. So we're really happy that everyone got their job back. Right, Melissa, am I right with that? Oh, that's good. We're 100% right, thank you. Okay, thank you. And I saw too that there's gonna be additional hiring as well. That's correct, that is correct. Any other questions from our PAC members? Okay. We're going to move on at this time uh, with visitor comments. We have no visitors, correct, Laura? We have no visitors, so. Um, Thank you. So we'll move on. Uh, and at this time, uh, Steve and I would like to present uh, to Tom Nelson an award for um, his time of service with our LCAP pack. He has served um, every single term, which is up to three terms, uh, which is six years. And we wanted to thank Tom um, for serving. Um, I personally would like to thank Tom for um, his support in helping me to transition as a, um, a chairperson. And prior to that, helping me for all the years that I've been on the PAC uh, with understanding um, how the PAC um, operates. And um, Tom, you are so amazing to me because, <laughs> because you put in so much time and effort and, and you always do it with a smile, you do it with grace. Um, you're always so open. You're also, um, you're, you also, um, don't try to overshadow people, even though you have a lot of knowledge and you allow people to learn at the pace that they're able to learn at. And I really appreciate that about you. Um, so you, you're just an amazing person and you really uh, deserve, I mean, I wish I could have gave you a million dollars today, but you, know, you really deserve <laughs> this, this certificate of appreciation. Well, well thank, thank you. I, I mean, I couldn't, you know, certainly couldn't do it without a, a team effort. And also, I, I feel this, you know, uh, well, for one, I, I feel that, gee, I was honored last year. <laughs> we should spread it around more. Uh, you know, Kim, especially you, you you've, you've done a, a dynamic, fantastic job this year. I mean, you really came in with not even having had the experience of being an assistant chair and you've been able to take on on the reins so thank you and because i think you you and you and steve have been fantastic in in, in uh taking on that that the leadership role this year you know how modest you are you're like hey this is your moment <laughs> <laughs> well thank you steve yeah i'd like to echo what you said kim about tom uh the, the knowledge base and uh, like you said, the patience to uh, with with me to take it all on and learn the learning curve is a steep one. Uh, took me several months to start to get the hang of things. I'm still working on it. Um, but uh, just it was, it's amazing to work with Tom because you come up with something on the fly on the phone and he's already has the emails. He already has the links. He already has. It's like, did you know I was going to say like he already has it ready to go? And it's just. He's like the Library of Congress. He's got it all. <laughs> so uh, thanks for yeah. everything, Tom. <laughs> and at this time, we'd like to um, open it up for all of our PAC members if they would like to say anything um, or give any congratulations to Tom at this time. I would. Thank you, Tom. Tom has been a huge help to me this year, being my first year on the committee. I have absolutely had the same experience as Steve. 
where I've called him up with a question and he immediately has like 15 documents that he sends me. Um, <laughs> it's been amazing. He even personally delivered the binder, the instructional binder to me at the beginning of the year. So uh, it's been just an amazing resource. So thank you very much. Yeah, this is Amber. I want to hop in just to share appreciations as well. Um, not only that, but Tom goes the extra mile to show up in our community spaces. He consistently attends our community impact group meeting and shares information there and asks how he can be of help there and shares other information with me all of the time from the day that I've met you. And so um, I want to appreciate you um, for all of that as well too, Tom. Oh, thank you. I, it's, I mean, yeah, we've, we've got a, a great team and, uh, you know, I, I'm glad it been able to, you know, help other people and look forward to those other people being able to, you know, move, step forward and take on leadership roles and, and uh, basically, uh, you know, um, uh, find, find, you know, their, their place and to, um, you know, Live, uh, stretch the envelope for them, and uh, just be able to excel at, at what they can. So, I, I'm I'm glad I provided uh, resources and support for for people. So, thank you. But wait, there's more, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I couldn't not say. I know I expressed in the chat, but yeah, no, similarly, you have just been really rad. I, I think if it was not for you, I probably wouldn't have made it, <laughs> honestly, on the LCAP. Um, you have really been supportive from the beginning. Um, and to Amber's point, um, even outside of the LCAP, like, you know, you show up and you ensure that, you know, folks in community, whether parents or, you know, co community folks kind of stay aware of ways that we can be meaningfully engaged within the district and, and make sure that those systems of communication stay strong. Um, and that's that's definitely not only um, been a value to, of course, LCAP, um, but, you know, putting on our organizational hat, like to our work in community, and then putting on my parent hat, right, for me as a parent um, outside of this role to be able to really um, show up within my values at times that matter. And so um, that is is really priceless and um, yeah, you deserve all of the roses. You just tirelessly show up and uh, uh, just your level of commitment is, is unquestionable. And so we really value and appreciate you for sure. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Tom and congratulations. I'm with my boy. So <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy and you are there every time helping me. Kim, Laura, everyone. So I blessed to be the part of PAC LCAP. So I'm happy. Thank you again. Congratulations. You have such a wonderful knowledge that you provide to everyone and makes mm. a brighter person. Well, so that's that's the thing. Thank you. Yeah. Well, thank you. I, I'm glad I've been able to um, be a positive model and uh, it's because I've, I've had positive models uh, my, myself from, um, you know, my, my uncle who is a uh, principal of a high school in, in Minnesota and some of my other relatives that have been involved in, in education. So thank you. And I, another thing is the kids. The kids have actually inspired me when I, when I was uh, working with them um, and just seeing what, what the kids can do, kids like, uh, uh, you know, Mar Marley, Fortin, and, and Jackson, and Serena. Um, it's they they are, they are also role models for for me, and I think for all of us. Because I I remember tell telling this to, to Marley one time when we were meeting that uh, just because the students that uh, are, are younger that um, age ha has no monopoly on wisdom because I have seen a lot of wisdom that exceeds. Uh, what I see from many adults coming out of these kids. Yeah. Wonderful. Well, thank you again, Tom and Laura, if you could present his certificate. I put it in the chat box. Um, let me see. Can I share that? I'm not really sure. 
Let me see. I don't think it's going to pop up when I share my screen. Let me look. Oh, okay. there we go. So this is a certificate of appreciation to you, Tom, from all of us. Thank you so much. We can, we can unmute you guys. <laughs> Congratulations, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you one Congratulations. Yeah. Hey, Tom. Thanks so much, uh, Tom. Yeah. Hey, Tom. Uh, from the district and the board, thank you for your many, many hours of service. I don't think there's a, another community member in my 12 years on the board that attends board meetings more than you. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're engaged. And uh, Tom actually uh, served as one of my representatives. Tom, what was it for? Facilities? I can't even remember what it was. If yeah, it was actually a, a curriculum and standards. There we go. Okay. So so I was, yeah, there for a couple, two, three years, I think. I yeah, so he, over to LCAP. he has done the gamut of, co of committees in our district. And sincerely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you, Tom. We appreciate all your service, and thank you so much. Well, thank, thank you so much, Saul. You've, you've been a wonderful support, and mm -hmm. I really appreciate uh, really appreciate everything that you have also done. Like I said, you're, you're one of those giants whose shoulders oh. I've been able to stand on. <laughs> this, is your, this is your moment. Thank you. <laughs> He's so modest. Uh -huh. <laughs> I just okay. want to share that um, your commitment and dedication to the district is obvious in everything you've done. Um, but Tom has also been great at keeping me on my toes because he'll he'll send me an email going, Laura, this link doesn't work on the website or, <laughs> or Laura, this date is wrong. And so thank you for keeping me on my toes too, Tom. Yeah, well, you know, it's part of, uh, part of us all supporting each other. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, at this time we have um, Trent um, who will be giving us a presentation today. Hi, welcome, everybody. Welcome, Trent. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Okay. Um, so I apologize for being a few minutes late. I'm doing double duty tonight. I'm actually over at Creekside for our Creekside community meeting and presented there and then ran over to a slightly warm classroom. Um, so I apologize if I'm getting a little red. Um, but let me get my presentation going. Um, so what we have to share with you tonight is what we're going to share with the board at their next meeting. Um, and honestly, there's probably not a lot in here you don't already know. Um, so let me retrain myself on sharing screen. There we go. All right. See my screen okay? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So we had a board workshop back in April. Um, it was really on board governance and that transition from five to seven members. But one of those conversation pieces we had was about committees and how they relate to the board and, and how they should uh, continue to interact with the board as we move forward. And there were some questions that came up specifically about the LCAP PAC, um, how we were functioning, some of those pieces. There was also some conversation actually at this week's board meeting on some of those same topics as well. So this is actually pretty timely that we're bringing this back. And again, like I said, um, this is all data, which you're not gonna see in here or any recommendations or thoughts on what should happen or should be done. Uh, we're just responding to the board's ask for um, some more information and some more perspective. So uh, we put this together. Um, I think I actually heard most of this discussed at Tuesday night's board meeting. Um, so again, I don't think you're gonna see any big surprises in this. Uh, but we wanted to share it with you before we share it with the board and of course would um, love any conversation you want to have around it as well so there's really three sections to this presentation uh, one is just context and given talking about purpose and, and kind of our efforts to expand voice um, the lcap pack service in san juan unified which is really just looking at uh, over the last few years how we've been doing with getting members onto the pack, how we've been doing with attendance on the pack, um, and then looking at some models that are in use in other systems, because that's one of the questions, again, that the board had asked us to bring them some information back on. Um, I'll go very quickly on this slide, because I think you're all very aware of what you're charged to do. You have education code, which calls out the LCAP, uh, or a parent advisory group, and in San Juan, we've implemented that as the LCAP pack. Um, and then, of course, your committee bylaws, which really then spell out your advisory work to uh, advise the board on the LCAP, make those recommendations um, to the board on that LCAP document. 
So one of the pieces that had come up during the April workshop was, you know, kind of what's different in how we go out and collect voice when we first started with our LCAP representative group, because it was not the PAC at that time, um, and what are we doing now? So as we look back to 2014, when we kind of first started with the effort, um, the, the representative group itself is different. We have the LCAP 35, which um, for those who were around Tom, um, was this representative group of district committees. Um, so pulling from our other committees, our labor groups, board members and students. So pulling 35 folks together, almost mirroring what we had done a few years prior to that in strategic planning, trying to have a representative group. That was the group we brought together to kind of look at and review uh, some data, some conversation and make some recommendations. Um, in 2014, we kind of went back and to the best of our ability we can tell, it looks like we really were consulting with probably about 14 educational partners. Uh, conversely, now we count about 38 educational partners amongst those groups that we outreach to and have conversations with. And then you can see under that outreach and participation, um, we can certainly continue to evolve that effort as you are all well aware, because I know many of you have made those suggestions on what those things should be and how we should do those things. Um, so that has continued to evolve as well. So we, um, I, I'm confident in saying that we have more voice coming into the process now than we did in 2014. So switching over to service on the PAC, um, looking at the turnover for the PAC for the last three years, we have 11 vacancies and you can see on the left-hand side there, the breakdown by year. 2021, of course, was COVID year and a rough year. And then on the right, um, we've kind of summarized as we had staff go through and attempt to contact all of those folks and ask them, hey, um, what was really the reason for your uh, resignation if you resigned? Or if you didn't resign, we did note it down as um, there were a couple of folks who had left because of attendance issues. You'll see that was the, the number one piece there. Um, so we've just kind of summarized those reasons for why folks left the PAC. Um, continuing on that idea of uh, service on the PAC, um, looking at just this last year, just noting that you have had two vacancies. Um, that was kind of a conversation topic at Tuesday night's board meeting as well. Um, and that we have had five members miss 50% or more of the meetings this year. Um, again, nothing you guys don't know. Um, and then um, you've met quorum at all but one meeting this year. Um, I'm hoping by the end of this meeting, you're gonna make quorum too. And then finally, just a slide on models and other systems. So we tried to look at systems that were similar in size and demographics to us. So you'll see uh, some of the San Jose's. Uh, we also looked at some of those who are close to us, the centers and the Folsom's and the Rocklands. I would not say they are similar in size or demographics, uh, but we wanted to see what some of our, our local neighboring partners are doing as well. Um, what you'll see here is it's all over the map. We have some folks uh, who are really using that representative model where they're pulling people from other committees and just doing a subsection. You have other groups who are just using one of their other existing committees to do that. Um, and then you have a, a couple who are doing it the way we do where they pull together a very focused group uh, to have those conversations. I think the other thing I would call out is that there was a really cross section, I guess, of um, groups who do mix staff with parents with students on whatever that structure is, uh, which is kind of where we started and we decided to move away from. So again, we're not making any recommendations. I just wanted to call that out as one of the things that was observed for folks. Um, but again, we've already made that decision. That wasn't the model necessarily for us, uh, but it is one that we do see. And that's all the data we have to present. So the rest of it really is up for board conversation. Um, and again, that's uh, what we're looking for is just to provide that information back to the board um, so that they can have those conversations uh, to see where they would like to go. Are there any questions from our PAC? Yeah, Tom has a question. Yeah, um, I, I was wondering, well, for one, if you might go back to slide number three. Um, it uh, basically just I wanted to reference because I think slide number three you, you referenced uh, some ed code there. Yes. And what I wanted to uh, mention is I believe the uh, LCAP it was new in, in 2014 2015 
and the California Department of Education has changed things. Legislation regarding it has changed. Originally, um, my understanding is the LCAP, in, in the original legislation, it, it, it was a Brown Act committee. However, legislation changed and it became a Green Act committee. And because I heard a comment from a board member Tuesday night referencing that Brown Act, and I think uh, the board member said that they thought the LCAP should become a Brown Act committee. My understanding is that it is written in Ed Code that, um, that it is a Green Act committee and that the school board would not have any authority uh, to override Ed Code and change it to a Brown Act committee. Um, so I'm just wondering if there's any clarification you can provide on that. So I'm not familiar with Ed Code that says LCAP PACs are by default Green Act committees because what it does say is you don't necessarily even have to create a new group. It can be an existing group that you already have if it meets the proper definition. And then as you saw in what other folks are doing, pulling people from other existing groups. Um, so I, I'm not familiar with that, but we can certainly research that. If it were to be an Ed Code, obviously, then you're correct. The board would not be able to override that. Um, the differentiator really on Green Act and Brown Act uh, for the context of this committee is gonna be whether it's kind of a board appointed committee or not a board appointed committee, because that really becomes the defining line. Well, it's another defining line, I'll put it that way, for whether you need to be in that Green Act zone or that Brown Act zone. Okay, yeah, I'd appreciate it if you could um, check on, on that and get back because at the time um, it was written into our bylaws that we were a Brown Act committee and I, I checked with the, um, with the Sacramento County Office of Education, their legal department said it's Green Act. And then I also found references in the legislation uh, code. And I can send you that, that, that information where it says it's Green Act, as, as well as a CDE website. And, and also when we did change our bylaws, it went to the um, San Juan legal department and they also checked it over. So I'd just like to make sure that everybody is kind of on the same page uh, yeah. and, and confirm that, that uh, every, you know, everybody gets on the same page because I, you know, I, everything I see says that legislation says it's a, a Green Act committee. Yeah, if you wouldn't mind sending the references you have, we'll definitely take a look at that and we'll do research as well. Um, and, then, and Tom, if you could also provide those to our PAC and in, yeah. either in an email or um, um, and a link this evening. Sure. I would, yep. as well. the, yep. And then you're, you're absolutely right. Your current bylaws have been reviewed by legal and in your current structure, you, you, there's nothing that says you can't be green in the way green act in the way you're structured. Now there's nothing that says you can't be green act in the way you're structured now. Yeah. Yeah. Right now we are under the green act. Yeah. And I, I also really appreciate that slide showing those, um, uh, numerous districts have one rep, their LCAP pack is made up of one representative from their uh, school site or their school site councils, because I think that that is something worthy of considering since the uh, LCAP plan being a district um, plan for the district as a whole should um, complement the school site plans. So that that is that. I find is also a, a worthy model to look at, um, as well as, uh, the, um, and it's not actually mutually exclusive either, the way that uh, Sac City does it, where their, uh, their members are appointed by uh, school board members. So um, that, uh, you know, if, um, of course, uh, with, with having over 60 schools, it would, increase the size of the pack significantly. Um, and, and that would really change the, the dynamics of, of the meeting. So there's a, a lot of things there to, for, I think this, the school board to, to consider. Um, but uh, I, you know, I appreciate seeing the, uh, the various opportunities there. And that's a, a, another aspect that uh, I wanted to uh, sort of mention is that the way that things were in the past are not necessarily the way that things are now. And, and um, the, the change to legislation, changing it from a, uh, to a Green Act committee is an example. So one of the things I think going forward is, is uh, 
for the committee uh, and to always be looking at uh, creative solutions and, and question assumptions and sometimes need to you know, question authority because sometimes authority is, is basing their perceptions on uh, assumptions that uh, may have been valid in the past but are, are no longer valid. So that's, thank you for letting me make those comments. Thanks, Tom. And Stephanie, you had a comment? Stephanie, your hand is raised. Okay, we'll come back to Stephanie. Heather, did you have a comment? I think yeah, I just lost um, Stephanie. Just, Can you hear just me now? Really... Hello? Oh, it's, go, ahead. Yeah. go ahead, Stephanie. Okay. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. Sorry, the microphone was set on a different speaker. Okay. Okay, so um, the slide number, is that number four of the vacancies or five? Right there. Okay, right there. Um, so are we voting on those vacancies tonight? No, we're not. We're we just gonna invite, continue to invite for next year. So um, this is just a presentation. Um, for us to have a, a understanding about the meeting, the board meeting on the 28th, about what will be presented there. So for during the summer, this was mostly engaged to our so, community to see so, if they okay. can come and so like invite. Is, okay, so this is our this is our LCAP pack attendance right here. Yeah. And so we after this meeting, we'll have a better reference of who's coming back and who's leaving. I know we do have two high school students who are leaving. And I believe we have one additional person who may be leaving. So once we find out how many people are leaving the pack, then we'll know exactly how many vacancies we have. Okay. So basically, over the summer. So basically our goal, whoever's staying per se, our goal in the back of our mind is to engage with our community to invite to be a Central part of our pack community. numbers. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. But push forward that we need to engage, but make sure we're enforcing that you need to be um, consistent and and reliable. But well, I would say we're going to leave that up to the board members who select them, and okay. and to staff and maybe leadership. Yep. Okay. But I mean, if it's a friend of yours, I would definitely. No, I'm just saying to the whole community. That. Yes. The whole community. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Okay, Heather. Yeah, uh, kind of full circle back to the conversation related to the Brown Act and the Green Act. I guess I had a clarifying uh, question. I don't know who it would be for, maybe Tom. Um, there was reference made about uh, someone on the board um, alluding to the fact that there may be a desire uh, from what I, I heard and translation, I guess, to um, shifting back to the Brown Act. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if there was any additional context to what the value would bring because um, I, I know that our purpose in shifting to Green Act and kind of uh, going through that motion was to have the least restrictive um, barriers for us to effectively engage and communicate in order to really move this work forward. And so I'm just wondering if there's like an oppositional narrative or something that I'm not considering that would add value to the community-led work here. Well, in the meeting that uh, on Tuesday night, um, I'm not too sure if some of the board members were aware of how the Green Act even operates. And so there was an issue with our um, recommendations when we had made our recommendations throughout the year, but never had made uh, brought them to the board. Uh, the board had, I guess, thought that we were supposed to vote on those recommendations. And since we had not voted on those recommendations and because we were having all of our different subcommittees, our working meetings, and discussing some of those recommendations within those meetings, then they said that they didn't feel comfortable with that. And because of that, they were thinking that's why we should go back to the Brown Act, which is doesn't even make sense. But I believe it's because they were not clear on the operation of the Green Act. Wait a minute, how long, how long have they not been clear? What didn't we vote on the Green Act at the beginning of the school year though? Yes, we are under the Green Act. Okay, so then the main board was been confused all the school year? Correct. Okay, the miscommunication. Come on, y'all. 
Hey, Miss Brown, can yes. let, me, let me comment. Okay. You know. Thank you, Saul. I appreciate it. So, you know, I I don't know if there's a perfect way, but let me just give you my perspective on this. This is my opinion only. Okay. So I think, I think if I asked you, all of you pulled you pulled you up, hey, what do you, you know, is the is it the board's responsibility? to put members on this committee. And I think that most of you would probably say, yes, that is your responsibility to select uh, who, who's on this committee. But the, the reality is that this committee is different than most every other dis committee in the district because in this committee, people will apply. Now we go and try to recruit like everyone else, but we, we, we appoint on this committee, we don't approve. And the difference is, when if I appoint a committee member to a committee or any committee, that person has a direct line to me and they represent me, if you will, in that committee. But it allows me to be able to say, and I'll use Tom, uh, hey, Tom, you have missed, um, you know, four meetings in the last four years. Is this a good fit for you? And we have that. And I do have that type of communication with, with the people that represent committees that represent me on those other committees. And so what we're trying to figure out is what's the best way to help this committee, where Saul is anyway, again, I'm talking on Saul. What's the best way to help that these members are engaged, that they know that what the role is of this committee and that they actually are viable committee members? Because we don't want anybody to waste any time. Of course, we don't want that. And we want them to have feel valued that they're part of this committee. And so I think that's where Saul, again, one fifth of the board is trying to figure out what's the best way to get there. OK, I'm not too caught up with the green and the brown. That's not what's important to me. What's important to me is that I think I personally think I have a much more engagement with that committee member if I pick them. OK, and they and I have an interview with them before they're on this committee, I explain what the role is what the responsibility is and how they're going to help give feedback to this committee and then give back feedback to me. That's, I think that's where we are, or that's where Saul is anyway, in the thinking, if that helps at all. I have a question about that, Saul. Go ahead. Um, I had spoken with some members from other committees and they were saying that they had similar issues that we're having, we're facing. And so, and they, and two of them, they're from different committees had said that they did not have a close relationship that they you know had a relationship with the board members but not a not a working relationship where they felt like they could just connect with them so what would be the difference is my question well, and, I would and also and then the second question would be um and then how effective are these other committees compared to lcap pack if they're saying that they're having some of the similar problems that we are well i can i can only respond on the the committee members that I, that I have dialogue with. I have one committee who, for example, sits on curriculum and standards. Every single month at the end of that meeting, she emails me, Saul, this is what we discussed. This is how I, you know, things would happen. You know, how do you feel about that? We talked, okay. Uh, that would be true for um, facilities as well. On facilities, each board member has two. Now, I, I am the board liaison for the facility. So I attend that meeting. So that may be a little different, but I do have dialogue with those, my representatives as well. But I think that if, if Tom were my representative on the LCAP committee, that we should have a dialogue at least once a quarter to say, hey, this is what's going on. This is what's working. This is, what, you know, he's given me his opinion on what's going on. I'm giving him my opinion on what's going on. But there should be dialogue there, I think. Okay. I agree with you, Saul. And I think that that may be that may be a missing link piece, even with the LCAP pack, is that in previous years, or yeah, that there hasn't been that type of dialogue between the liaison and the um and the leadership. The yeah. uh, and so even if that was established how it has been this this year, because I feel like we I feel like we have a relationship and that's why we trust you. Yeah, well, and thank you. But I, I think that um, because it, 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 there should be dialogue because when it gets uncomfortable, you know, you should be able to be able to say, you know, I, I uh, you know, I've had somebody tell me, hey, look, I just didn't like being part of that committee. Okay. Do you want to do something else? No, I don't. All right. No problem. You know, but 
at, when I first came on liaison for this committee, I reached out to a member who I didn't know who she, anything about her, you know what I mean? And we were having dialogue and I'm pretty much saying, hey, you wanna do this, yes or no? And, um, and I think that when you have a, a dialogue with the person that you represent, it just makes things easier because when it, when it gets to a point where it is uncomfortable, you, you can have a meeting of the minds that, hey, maybe this is not for you. You know what I mean? Or, or what's the problem? Can we fix this? You know, and so that's my personal opinion. And I would love that this committee be as that to where, um, again, I think you're hedging where Saul feels about, you know, appointing or not appointing this committee because I want that kind of relationship with the person that represents me for the committee because I think it's very important for everybody at home. That's my personal opinion. Thank you, Saul. And so you think that that works better? I do, I do. And so for the committees that have liaisons, you feel as if those committees do not operate as well? Well, I think that those uh, committee members that have a relationship or dialogue with their board member, I think that's the way it's supposed to work. Mm -hmm. I think it, because how, if that's not the case, how does the board member know what's going on in that committee? Mm -hmm. See what I mean? So I think, I think in the in the past, the way the LCAP has been operating prior to this year is that um, the board liaison would, con would um, connect with the staff members and the staff members would connect with the um, leadership of the LCAP PAC, where there should have been that flow between the board liaison and the LCAP PAC um, chairperson and assistant chair. And like you said, you establish something with the people that you appoint um, where you guys meet uh, you said what they email you once a month after each meeting. Right. That's something that could have been established with our LCAP pack and probably would have helped to work better with, with our flow as well. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I, again, I don't know if there's a exact perfect way, but any way that we can get better. Hey, let's talk about it. Okay. Thank you, Saul. We appreciate you. Um, Amber, you had a question? Yeah, I want to take us um, take us back a little bit. At the tail end of Trent's presentation, it was probably like the last couple of slides. Um, I feel like he touched on the way that LCAP used to be, and it sounded like uh, my understanding was that in years prior, um, staff or parents who also worked with the district could be part of LCAP. Um, was that correct? And that has changed? So when we had the LCAP 35, that actually had staff specific members, um, as well as representatives from our labor groups. So in the context of, if you happen to be a parent, I suppose, and that staff member, yes, it would have been true. Um, I don't know if that was actually the case or not. Okay, a couple of questions there. Um, I would just love to know more context of like why that change and what was sort of why that wasn't working. Um, and also too, if I guess clarification, if parents who are staff members are able to participate in these parent groups such as LCAP and facilities committee and curriculum and standards and things like that. So um, I think there's probably two pieces that I can think of, and Tom might have some additional context as well. Um, one is there was a desire to um, let the parent group have its own voice because there was a thought that the labor groups, the staff, um, they, they all have inroads and they all have an opportunity for voice along the way as already. And that the voice we have from parents is probably different when it's parents in the room versus parents and staff uh, and, and labor leaders sitting in the room together. So I think there was a, a desire to give some uh, space to that parent voice. Um, the other element of that I think is when we went through and we redid the bylaws for all of the committees, one of the things the board did do in approving those bylaw changes was really looking at um, being very clear about who could participate in setting up those pieces. So I think it's written into all of those committee bylaws uh, that um, staff um, should not necessarily be uh, part of those. And, and I think it goes along with that same logic of 
not wanting to provide overrepresentation of staff and or have somebody who knows so much that they overburden the conversation and don't uh, make parents feel comfortable to engage in conversation. That's helpful. Thank you. Yeah, I, I think uh, Trent uh, oh, described it. Oh, Quite sorry, well. Tom, one second. Heather, did we answer your question earlier considering um, uh, regarding the Green Act and the Brown Act? Or you the did, but I had raised my hand because I, I had, I guess, a follow-up um, thing to lift if I have time and I'm able. Sure, please. Um, yeah, so I, I just wanted to say thank you, Saul, for giving that level of explanation. I think that that helps to be able to understand the perspective of the board and um, to see some opportunities to uh, bridge efforts, because I'm, I'm, what I'm hearing you say is we kind of want the same thing in terms of a robust uh, representation and effective LCAP team. Um, I, I want to lift just while we're on the topic that um, just a few things in, in my time throughout the years of LCAP and some things that have kind of been reoccurring for consideration in that conversation. Um, one of the things that um, we've we've lifted and explored uh, for some length of time is how to make the LCAP process accessible in a very equitable way, um, because it can be a very ominous task. And when we're thinking about, um, you know, having diverse representation, especially from the unduplicated student uh, groups, um, the 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 huge binder filled with all of the academic language and the terminology that is foreign and specific to school systems and then this uh high fast paced kind of process to um you know analyze dissect and, and critically analyze all of this data um i understand the purpose and it should be very specific and also i've often questioned um if that level of uh, like, where is the capacity building arm that's that's very equitable and inclusive? Um, because we've heard a lot of folks be resistant to stepping into leadership or even participating formally on the LCAP uh, committee because it seems um, it seems very challenging, and a lot of folks don't feel like they have what it takes to be on the board. And I think that that's. Uh, that's a shame because all voices should be included and heard. And I think that there's some system shift opportunities or process shift opportunities rather than looking for people that fit perfectly into a system that has been created from the top down, it would be more equitable and more person and student and family centered to adjust that process within the means of course of ed code and the law to ensure that we are uh, being inclusive in practice, if that makes sense. The language is not accessible um, to the point that my own husband, I had him finally come to an LCAP meeting and he left and he was like, oh my gosh, that felt so professional. It felt executive to him, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's that's a culture and climate indicator to me um, that could also lend to the disengagement and the lack of uh, kind of follow through. Um, but in addition to that, something that I've heard consistently, but also especially through this year with all of the chaos and this is not a dig at anyone in particular. I think we've all tried our best to navigate COVID. <laughs> so I want to lead with that. And also, when I came into LCAP, I will say um, the whole LCAP uh, representation had been terminated, shifted, whatever. It was like cleaned house. There was a lot of frustration, a lot of folks feeling as though the board wasn't listening, a lot of folks feeling like they spent all this time to do this work and lift these things. And at the end of the day, the board, you know, and, and I wasn't there, so this is just what I had heard, you know, said, well, we're doing something different. Uh, similarly, you know, even with folks throughout my, my time on the LCAP have left feeling hurt left feeling as though they, they're sharing their lived experiences to no avail, um, that the system's change is so long and egregious, and their, their labor of love, because we don't get paid to be here, we work hard jobs, we have kids, we show up, we don't even get uh, gas stipends, and that's okay. I've been on this thing for years, and I'm not looking for that. I want to see change, but that's the problem, is that we're, we're investing our emotional labor, we're sharing our hearts and our time, um, just because we care about our kids and we want to see our students succeed and when when the system change takes so long and we feel like our voices are not heard and the process moves at its own speed where we can't actively participate in meaningful ways and then the board makes decisions regardless of all of those months of time that are in opposition or that you know without no real response to us about why the things that we lifted and recommended weren't approved then that can be defleeting and that can be super disengaging and so i want to challenge that in addition to those things that you mentioned and i 
think that they would add value. There's a lot of nuanced things that are lost that need to be discussed and evaluated. And it should always, every process, regardless of ed code, should start with the people. And we've been sharing and saying what we've wanted and what we needed and how we could stay more engaged for a long time. Um, and we've got some great people working in San Juan. This, this is not personal to anyone. I, I love our LCAT folks for sure. Um, but I think that we have a long ways to go. Um, and I think that, you know, shifting back to old ways of being when the community has said, this is what we want, would fall on deaf ears as well. And that would maybe perpetuate that disengagement rather than help it. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, Heather. Now, I'll, I'll say I, I completely agree with Heather, and I'm all for board appointed members, um, but I'm I'm staunchly against going back to Brown Act for many, many reasons. It's just to be able to communicate out of the monthly meetings, just number one. And I think that if there are any changes being made, that the LCAP pack should be a part of that process, like I said in the last meeting. Yeah. Um, there was, a um, Tom, you had a question. Thank you, Heather. Is Tom still on? Oh, yeah. Oh, We're waiting for Tom's question. Yeah. Can we um, get the list for the uh, education partners? Are they listed? John, I think you have that list, yes? Yeah, I do. We can uh, email that out to you, Stephanie. Right. Yeah. All right. Um, I was just going to say that um, uh, that in the in the past, uh, when there was the LCAP uh, 35, there um, there were um, members that well, they, they were there were voting members and non-voting members. So there there was a LCAP committee that included. Um, like representatives from the, the labor unions, but they were non-voting members. And for quite a while they were invited. And after a while they basically quit coming because they weren't voting members. But it was also the, the idea that, um, and that's the way it's written into the bylaws, is that if you're an employee of the San Juan School District that is represented by a labor union, um, then you already have representation. So uh, employees that are not represented could uh, can still be on LCAP. And I think those would only be like yard duty people, for example, um, that are they're employed by the school district um, and uh, but they're not represented by a labor union. So they could still be a member. So th that's that's the way the bylaws are written to make that uh, clarification. And also to, you know, say that otherwise, uh, you know, if you had teachers or administrators or other people, then it would be kind of like they have the voice through their own labor union to the administration, as as well as on the LCAP. So it was a, a way to sort of balance, try to balance the voices that are being heard by the school board. Thank you. Are those all the questions for this evening for Trent or comments? Um, I just had well, one question, um, Trent. I wanted to know, um, where was it at? Um, oh, out of the 30 educational partners, um, which, which of those, um, how many of those are like outside organizations uh, versus edu educational partners within the school district? Um, I'm going to lean on John. My my sense is of the growth, a lot of that growth has been external, okay. but I'm going to lean on John for that definitive answer. Okay. Yeah, so one of the community partners is the Equity Community Collaborative, mm -hmm. and there were seven community groups within that. Okay, so seven groups total? Uh, within, yeah, within the Equity within Community. Within the one, okay, got it. And then there's additional external groups beyond that on that list. That is true. And you're so have, why haven't they, like, why haven't we had um, a meeting where everybody's in the meeting, like from each partner's group? That could be something we could think about for next year. Because how are we going to gauge if we don't know where our education partners are, like fully, like understand what they do? 
Maybe something we can talk about um, plan for next year, for sure, Stephanie. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments? And we want to thank you, Trent, so much uh, for sharing with us this evening. Yeah, thanks for having me. We are going to move on um, to do attendance roll call. Okay, at this point in time, we are going to see if we have quorum. So I just will go down the list. Uh, Deborah Abelis, Karen Brown, Kim Brown. Here. Amber Busby. Here. Elnoria Colbert. She's here. She's checking on a friend. Um, can she, you know what? She really needs to give a verbal okay. I'll get her. approval. Okay, okay, that'd be great. Stephanie okay. and Stephanie. <laughs> Heather Gonzalez. Here. Elizabeth Hawkins. Here. Uh, Zena. Here. Tom. Here. Neelam. Here. And Steve. Here. Um, we have nine right now. If Elnoria um, comes in, we will have quorum. Okay. Okay, and then, hey, and now Here. Elnoria. Okay. Great. So there are going to be some votes tonight, Stephanie. So we would like to request that Elnoria stay in the meeting. So yeah, she's go here. Ahead. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. With that, we'll move on to approving the minutes. Uh, because we didn't have quorum last month, we were not able to approve the April 21st meeting minutes. So let's start there. Uh, I'll run down the list. Um, Kim, do you approve the April 21st meeting minutes? Yes. Amber? Aye. Thank you. Elnoria? There you go. Stephanie? Those are our minutes. Okay. Five minutes. Here. Yes, we agree. Got it. Thank you. I agree. Um, Heather? Abstain. Elizabeth? Abstain. I believe I was absent from that one. Dina? Is he Abs still? Abstain. I wasn't there. Thank you. Tom? Uh, yes, I approve. Thank you. Neelam? Yes. And Steve. Yes, I approve. Okay, let's move on to the May 26th meeting minutes. Kim. Approve. Amber. Aye. Elnoria. I approve. Stephanie. I approve. Heather. Abstain. Elizabeth. Abstain. Dina. Upstand. Tom? Uh, approve. Neelam? Approve. And Steve? Approve. Okay. With that, we have, we have quorum during the uh, minutes, so we will, uh, the April and the May minutes are approved. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Laura. We'll move on to our committee business. Um, we'll, so tonight we're going to be discussing our, um, our LCAP leadership um, we'll do our recommendations later, but our leadership election. Um, I did speak with um, Stephanie and she wanted to nominate Neelam for assistant chair. Um, I would like to nominate Steve for chair. And um, if there are any other nominations, um, anyone you would recommend, you can do that at this time. Jesus. <laughs> we yeah, got my vote. <laughs> Thank you. I will try my best. I'm with my boy. Yes, you know, because you're so cute. I love you. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> so, Neelan, would you accept um, being assistant chair? Yeah. And and Steve, would you accept uh, the nomination for chair? Oh, wait, wait, wait. Point is. Oh. Want to see clarification here? I, I think we first vote, nominate, and vote on chair first. Correct. Correct. I'm looking at the nominations first. 
Yes. Okay, so, so this is the nominations for the chair position, not for assistant chair, correct? Well, I'm looking for nominations for both first to see who even wants to be a part of being nominated for either or. Oh, okay. Well, then we'll, then we'll do the election on the chair first. Okay. Well, I, I think it might be good to do the chair first and then do the assistant chair entirely separately. So, so what we could do, we need to do a first motion for the chair. So maybe to uh, segue into that, do we have any other nominations for chair? We've got Steve right now. Do we have any other nominations? Okay, so with that, we need a first motion to nominate Steve for the chair. So I motion to nominate Steve for the chair. Okay, and do we have a second motion? I second awesome. it. Okay. Who was that? Elizabeth. Okay. Elizabeth. <laughs> Everyone was so quick. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and vote now. Um, Kim. Yes. Okay. Amber. Aye. Elnoria. Oh, you're on mute, Stephanie. Hold on. She already knows Steve is for chair, so she already agreed. Okay, but we need we need her to be. We'll go get her. Put me. Yeah. Okay, I'll put you in a yes. I'll keep going, but we need her here. Okay. Um, Heather. Yes. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yes. Tom. Uh, yes. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped you, Zena. Zena. Yes. Neelam. Yes. Steve. Yes. Okay. And and now oh, here. Okay, Anoria, would you like to um, vote You're for right. Steve to be our chair next year? Yes. Thank yeah, you. Better run to the bathroom. Sorry. Okay. So now we'll move on to the oh, assistant oh, chair. And um, Neelan was nominated, and I would like to nominate Amber for assistant chair. Uh, let's see. I would like to nominate Elizabeth as assistant chair. And uh, Amber, would you, Amber and Elizabeth, would you be interested in participating as assistant chair? Yes. I would not, but I would vote for Elizabeth. <laughs> Thank you, Amber. Okay. Is there anyone else? So we have Neelam, Elizabeth, and who else? Neelam and Elizabeth. Neelam and Elizabeth. Okay. All right, so Tom, this is where I need your expertise because this has never happened in, uh, since I've been here. Do we need to make a motion to nominate each of them or? Uh, um, I mean, sure, we, we can, we can, yeah. Um, okay. That might be a good way to, to do it is, you know, no, I- oh, Okay. Make a motion for each. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. sounds good. Yeah. So who makes the first motion to nominate Neelam for assistant chair. Me. Who's me? Stephanie. Stephanie. Okay. We want to put her on there. <laughs> All right. How about the second that motion? <laughs> Where are you, Stephanie? There you go. Okay. That's fine. And who would like to make the second motion? I second the motion. That's Kim. Okay. And who would like to make the first motion to nominate Elizabeth? or assistant chair? I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> I move, yeah. I'll do Zina for Elizabeth. Thank you. Zina, second. Okay, with that, we have two nominations running for assistant chair. So we will go ahead and move into the vote. Uh, so. Kim, who would you like to be your assistant chair next year? Elizabeth. Amber. Elizabeth. Elnoria. Oh, she said, don't show us a Nina Zane. Okay. Stephanie. Nina. Heather. I think they would both be great. Um, and I think Neelam. Elizabeth. Yes, myself. Can you do vote for yourself? Yes, yes. <laughs> Zena. Elizabeth. Tom. 
uh, Elizabeth. Milam? It's me because I'm there. <laughs> okay. Steve. I think Elizabeth, okay. even though I think both would be great. Six. Oh, this close by a vote to, of six to four. Let me double check my numbers. One, two. Six. Yeah, six to four. We have Elizabeth voted in as our assistant chair. Congratulations. Congratulations, everyone. Congratulations. Wait, who was it in here? Congratulations. It was who? Elizabeth Hawkins. And, and, and Elizabeth? Mm -hmm. Right. And we okay. don't have we don't have students tonight, so we will need to postpone that. Correct. Okay. Great. The floor is yours, Kim. All right. We'll move on to in-person, hybrid, or Zoom only meetings. So this is a vote, um, and I think we. I'm not sure how we're going to have to do this, Laura. Maybe the same way, similar. Um, <laughs> But anyways, if you would like to vote for in-person only, for hybrid, or for Zoom only. And I think I'd like to, to pose the vote initially for hybrid to see how many votes we get for hybrid. Because I know in the, um, in the email that I sent out, almost everyone had requested us to do hybrid mode. So do we... I motion, I motion um, that we vote on hybrid um, for our meetings, our, our um, meetings for next year. Great. I second. Yeah. Who is that? Is that Heather? Heather. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I don't want no Donkey Kong monkey pox. Okay. So we do the hybrid. Okay. How about if we go ahead and we vote on it? Um, I think we're okay. If we have a majority, we know that's correct hybrid's going to be it so let's go ahead and see how the vote plays out kim would you like to uh you are you voting for a hybrid meeting format yes amber hi oh, where's amber oh, there she, you're on mute amber oh yes okay elnoria no. okay stephanie hybrid Heather? Yes, hybrid. Elizabeth? Yes to hybrid. Dina? Yes. Tom? Yes. Neelam? Yes. And Steve? Yes. Okay, so by a vote of nine to one, uh, we will uh, motion carried or the vote approved to meet in hybrid next year. So wait, so that would mean we can show up in person, but if we don't get there in person, let's say we were whatever, whatever, we can be on Zoom at the same time, but still be in a meeting. So you can what? choose one or the other. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just for saying, because you never know what will pop yes, up. You can but let's say you still want to be car. engaged. Yes, and you're in the car and you're like, I'm all yes. late. Yes, you can. <laughs> but if you still be in the edge of meeting, yeah, like that. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. And Thanks. so the, the next vote we'll have will be on um, our LCAP pack picture on the website for next year and for the um, uh, future years coming, having our representation shown on um, our website. So I'd like to vote to see um, if our PAC members would like to do that. And just to let you know, if even if we vote and it's not unanimous um, and, and the vote goes through, if you do not want your picture on the website, you can opt out. So there is that opt out option. Okay. So um, I motion uh, to have our LCAT picture posted on our website uh, for future years. Do we have a second? Do we have a second? I'll, I'll second it and So we'll go ahead and vote. Uh, I see. We could have discussion. Um, oh. Um, on it. So after our motion in a second, then that that's when there's discussion. And I um, I just want to say that um, because we are a community <laughs> advisory committee, 
uh, representing the interests of, of the community to the school board that I think by having our picture on the website, it allows community members, even though they may not know us, they see a picture, they connect with us as being a, a person. Uh, and it, I think it just allows a better um, representation to the community, trying to make us accessible to the community so we can listen to the community and hear what the community is saying, which then gives us actually greater authority in our committee where we can say, this is what we're hearing from our, our community. And then as we forward our information of what we're hearing from the community to the school board members. So it, we provide a very important conduit between the community and the school board. And having our picture there, I think allows us to make those connections. Um, that's one of the reasons that you'll see the school board members have their pictures uh, on the website as well as the, the superintendent. And that's a, actually very common practice with uh, other organizations uh, where they have their, their leadership that is there to represent um, their constituents to make that sort of connection. So that's why I, I tend to advocate for it. So thank you for allowing us to have discussion. Okay, anyone else? Any other comments? And thank you, Tom, also for creating it and um, giving us the idea to do this. We appreciate Wait, it. Wait, what are we voting on again? Oh, oh pictures, that's right. Okay, yeah, right. Tom, I agree. Yeah, because it helped me with my legal case. Thank you. Okay, I think we're ready, Laura. Okay, Kim, would you like to have the PAC web picture on the website? Yes. Amber? Hi. Elnoria? Sorry, I don't mute. I'm sorry, did she say yes? I'm yes, sorry. Can she can hear you? Go ahead. Okay, Stephanie? Uh, yes, for pictures. Heather? Yes. Elizabeth? Yes. Tina? Yes. Tom? Yes. Neelam? Yes. And Steve? Yes. Okay, motion carried with 10 votes. Thank you so much. Great. Um, so I know that many of our members got phone calls um, a couple of days ago um, in regards to returning um, for our next year. And I know that there are two students who will be leaving and there is one member uh, who said that they may not be coming back and there were a few members who were undecided. Um, we're not calling anyone out this evening uh, to let us know um, if they will be returning or not, but I do just want you to um, kind of have this on your mind. And if you can let us know by the end of the week, um, if you'll be returning, I'll send out an email on, um, actually the end of the week is tomorrow. So it's by tomorrow, <laughs> if you'll be returning, or let's, let's set it for Monday, by Monday. Um, then I'll send out an email on Monday morning um, to see uh, what your decision is so that we have um, an idea of how many members we need to start looking for to fill the spots for our LCAP pack. Um, and I also wanted to thank um, everyone, everyone who's here and who isn't here. Thank you so very much for participating on this pack. Thank you for your time, your energy. Um, thank you for um, pressing through, um, for showing up. Um, I know it's been a difficult year. We reached out to all of our LCAP PAC members uh, a couple days ago, and uh, some people have had tremendous struggles uh, with family members, with jobs, uh, with transportation, um, just with life in general. Um, and so this year was a very, very difficult year for all of our members, for many of our members. Um, and so I just wanted to say thank you that you pressed through, you stayed with us. Um, and even for the ones who, who resigned, I'm sure that they had struggles, which caused them to have to resign. So thank you very much. Um, and that's, that's from me and from Steve. And I'm sure all of our members feel the same way about one another. Um, this was a great team to me. Um, I wish one thing we sent out was a survey to see, you know, um, how did you feel about this year? And I would say majority of everyone responded back. I wish I could have done more. And so um, just, just, 
having that type of desire. I hope to see so many of you back next year and I hope we give you the opportunities to do more. So thank you very much. We'll move on to um, our committee restructure. So I had uh, attended, me, Steve and Tom had attended the, um, the school board meeting on Tuesday night. And um, some of the things that we had been discussing prior to within the last, I would say maybe month and a half, two months, last two months is um, how we can make our LCAP pack better. And I know we brought this up in our last meeting as well. It came up tonight as well. Um, and, and the thing is, it isn't isolated to just our committee. So if anyone has made you, um, has made it appear that it is, it isn't. I've spoken with two other committees and, I'm, and I, my hopes and plans are to speak to some of the other committees, maybe all of them, to see how they have been doing and what some of their struggles have been as well. But we have had uh, struggles with attendance um, to where we didn't make quorum last time, uh, barely made quorum this time. And for, for, I would say, at least half of our meetings, we were struggling to make quorum until either someone popped in or you know we had to wait until we made quorum. So attendance was a real struggle for us this year. Um, I'm sure it had to do with COVID and uh, all the things that are associated with COVID, so not just COVID itself. Um, so hopefully uh, that won't be the case next year. And even if it is, I'm hoping that we prepare better so that if COVID is still a situation like it was this year and last year, that we're just better prepared to deal with those things and that we can uh, have uh, better meetings, um, more participation. So some of the things we came up with were um, having synchronous and asynchronous meetings. And this is something I'd like for our committee to begin to think about. And I don't know how any of you feel about us reaching out to you over the summer. I know the leadership will be getting together this summer to plan on some of this restructuring. But um, we were thinking that having different types of meetings might help with attendance and help with um, everyone being more informed with the information and also participating. Um, and then we also were looking at different technology. So one would be uh, moving forward with the hybrid uh, model instead of just Zoom or just in person. And that may help to build uh, more capacity building. And then we had also thought of um, um, our PAC members uh, being able to be visible, more visible within school sites. So planning a few visits to different school sites and being visible at some of their events and participating and sharing what the LCAT PAC is, what we do, and allowing people to see that we're just regular people just like them and that they could do it as well. And to help in um, with um, uh, more members with membership. So if any of our PAC members have any um, suggestions on what could make our meetings better, um, I'd like for you to share that this evening. So that's that. this is the discussion around committee restructure. And that's what we've come up with. Any questions, any comments? I I have a comment, although it's not necessarily, I guess, about restructuring, but just being my first year and feeling like I'm kind of now seeing the pieces come together. I don't know if there's something related to training or yeah, that was that's a part of it. the first year, kind of somehow making the pieces fit together. So then you're able to jump in a little bit more because I really tried to view my role this year as like, okay, I'm going to listen and learn and take in as much as I can. And I, you know, I think I might have been more comfortable jumping in if I felt like I had a good grasp on it earlier, if that makes sense. I agree. So we discussed that um, yesterday in our leadership meeting was training, training being like a focal point. So what we were, con what we're considering doing is having um, training for uh, the Green Act so people understand what that actually means, how we can communicate with one another, and uh, for Robert's Rules, how our meetings are supposed to um, uh, to go throughout the, from beginning to end of the meeting, um, what is allowed, what isn't. So the people have a better understanding and they feel comfortable with the process. And then also um, we are considering um, doing training or not considering, but we'll be doing training for um, the leadership. So that's something that did not happen for me and Steve this year. Um, 
for various reasons, but it didn't happen for us. So we want to ensure that there is there is real training uh, for our uh, chairperson, our assistant chair, so they know their roles and they also know their authority because they have authority and um, we want them to know, you know, what they can do, cannot do, as well as um, what the expectation may be for them. So we have we have training for that. Um, we are looking into some additional trainings and workshops that have to do with like equity, that have to do with um, curriculum, um, various workshops. And so we'll be looking at um, researching and trying to find different workshops and uh, different trainings. And one of the ones we were thinking of is if there was like a mock training. So, uh, and that was specific to um, Robert's rule where you can actually learn like hands-on how to do it, how it works and feel, begin to feel really comfortable with it. Cause a lot of people don't know coming in. And, and I think it was Heather that said, you know, some like her husband wouldn't feel comfortable. And so I think that this would probably help for people to feel more comfortable and for growth and for empowering people and to move into different areas into different committees as well. So um, definitely training is one of those highlights. I did speak to Melissa um, Bassanelli about training as well. And um, she seemed very optimistic. So I'm, I'm hoping that, uh, and she had some workshops that she thought our pack might really benefit from. So she'll probably be sharing more of that with us this, uh, this summer. And then we can present that to our pack. And another thing was that we had asked that instead of us getting information um, uh, so late that we would get it uh, more ahead of time. So getting our calendar ahead of time, uh, getting um, you know who we will uh, who will be presenting. So that's not something that just pops up in a meeting, but something that we really thought about and strategically planned for. Um, and also bringing in some of our outside partners and not just our district partner, uh, uh, not just our um, district uh, department heads. Um, so those are some of the things that we're planning for next year so that we are a stronger LCAP pack. Can I ask your question, Elizabeth? I can find my mute. Yes, that, that, that all sounds great. Thank you. Okay. All right. What about, um, I already did this though, but I mean, like, what about our board, our other members, like you guys, let's just say, um, so I, see how I was just giving the kids out popsicles, um, my Spanish would come. So let's engagement with families. And so what about us interviewing or just popping up like at school sites, of course we get to send parents or whatever, or just make an announcement that we'll be out at whatever site and just engage with people picking up or dropping off their kids um, on their opinion and like reporting it. Cause I've been doing that already for no, I, during the pandemic, well, like um, interviewing our um, our kids. Like if I go downstairs and I, I camera report, like how you guys feel about the school year and then get the kids perspective and then relate that back to the chair and co-chair. And then you guys break that down to like a slideshow. So it opens up a whole new window of, okay, this is what's going on with our kids at these school sites. That's a great idea. I think that if you do that, share it. Absolutely. Because we're not knowing, we're just, for saying on what our kids are going through at home. But me, say, I'm out here with the whole apartment complex kids. And like, they go to different schools, different grades. And um, I had to get their perspective on how they're they're doing. And so a lot of people died during COVID. And we're not knowing if they're still grieving or if they struggle during school or like my kids in foster care. We don't know. I think, so, I think Amber brought that up a couple times this year about us getting different forms of data. And I think that's perfect. It's like live from coming back LPEC TV. <laughs> so so what, we are, what we are planning for engagement though, what we would like to do um, is we would like to get out to some of these school sites. We would like to have LCAP PAC members who are interested in getting out to some of these school sites, but with pre-planned events. So events that are already happening, we were thinking about maybe some of the schools with their back to school nights and we can have an LCAP PAC booth out there and just share, just sharing the information. Yeah, because it don't matter. I've been at the laundromat sharing yeah. stores. And like any other ideas yeah. that and any other ideas that our LCAP pack may come up with, we definitely can look at all of those. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? And I know a huge concern. Go ahead, Tom. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I was going to say that I 
I would like to see the, the meetings um, structured around the LCAP document itself because the school board relies upon us to know that document, know the changes so that when we, uh, when it comes time in the, um, and, you know, as we approach June and we make recommendations, then we can make those recommendations with authority and confidence because we know what the existing LCAP document is. Now, possibly because the LCAP document has, well, currently it, it has five major goals. And we, so I'm thinking at, uh, that we break that, uh, we break it up where at each meeting um, or maybe you know a couple, we take a goal and we discuss it as, as it is in the LCAP document, um, that becomes one of the topics. So then we'll have like uh, you know, two meetings on goal number one in uh, say you know, August, September, and then October, November, we dig into L, uh, you know, LCAP goal number two, you know, or, or maybe we, we you know, break it up where we uh, do LCAP, uh, you know, one month LCAP goal number one, then LCAP two, then three, then four, then five, and then we repeat um, it as we, in the, in the uh, spring. Uh, in that our meetings then become focused on the LCAP and document and learning it where, and less so because I feel like a lot of our LCAP meetings have been kind of, I wanna say almost like a show and tell of different departments. And the departments will talk about what they do, but oftentimes they don't talk about how the LCAP document relates to what they're presenting. So, um, I, I would like to see the, the focus of the discussion, conversations, and topics be on the LCAP document it's, itself. And that, that also can be part of an ongoing training where both new members and existing members um, it will get, uh, they'll become familiar with the document because the document changes every year. And you can also then rely upon the existing members to um, say this is how the document was last year and it's pretty much the same but these sections have changed and that um, more senior uh, member on the committee can say these are the reasons it, it, it changed between last year and this year and then uh, the committee can sort of dig into well we're, have we seen improvement because of the changes we made mm -hmm. so um, that that I think has been sort of um, a weak point in our committee is we haven't really known the LCAP document as the LCAP committee as well as I think as a whole we should. I agree, Tom. Did we do that a couple of years ago though, Tom? Where we had, uh, we had to go around those major topics and we all had to make a presentation? Um, like, I, I, I think yeah. that's more what we're Miller. focused on. Um, yeah things that we wanted to put into the LCAP document, okay. not necessarily with what was already there. Oh, because yeah. Our recommendations for changes should be somewhat based upon a foundation of knowing what is already there. I agree with yeah. that. Mm -hmm. And so I think we've been lacking that understanding of what is already there, which then, you know, sometimes I feel like we make recommendations and staff will go, well, it's already in there, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, are you recommending that we increase funding for it or do it a different way? So I, that's, um, so that would be what I would recommend. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tom. Heather? Yeah, first I just wanted to say thank you all so much for like really thinking out of the box and looking at ways to really continue to you know, deepen the LCAP engagement and to take it a little bit further. Um, well done. I loved all the ideas that you brought. <clears throat> I think that um, the uh, one thing that I would just want to lift, I was thinking about just uh, pre-COVID. Oh, I feel so devastated because we did some really intentional um, engagement at Encina in particular um, through a lens, a focus lens, like an equity lens and understanding that a lot of the, the data like Encina representation was a, a huge uh, theme in terms of unduplicated student groups. Um, and so uh, able to talk with the students, like build relationships 
leadership and really talk to them about LCAP, but in a way that made them interested, <laughs> right? And just really talked about like the power of your voice, like the importance of, uh, you know, showing up, the the ways that you could help, uh, you know, change your experience and, and advocate for other students and things like that. Um, and we were able to get several, I think it was like three or four students participate on multiple times. Um, and they were super interested in joining and then COVID hit. And so I say all of that to say that like, what I saw was a shift in even the energy in that room, like folks that were super frustrated because we're fighting for the babies. Like we're just, we're happy that they're there and they're able to speak for themselves and we could just get behind them. Right. Um, a lot of healing seemed to happen there. And it was really beautiful to see um, the students showing up and, and, and we can, you know, and be empowered. So I say all that to say that, that like, LCAP can be super cool. <laughs> I mean, the purpose of it, equity, like, you know, um, purposeful investment, like lifting lived experience and voice and adding value to like opera, like tangible ways to um, fill those gaps. And I think that there's something that we could probably do to, um, I don't know, prepare like our talking points collectively um, and, and really really focusing in an equitable way to ensure that we have like, you know, representation of our unduplicated student groups and especially having our students there because they're ready and they care. And we saw that. And um, we do have some amazing students on the LCAP and there could be room for more. And I know that um, we also talked about having a student chair. I think that would be rad. I don't know where we're at on that, um, but I loved that idea. And, and it would be amazing to um, continue to have have just as much student engagement as possible because they're our why and they can inform us better than anyone. And you're absolutely right, Heather. What about us having the, um, all the board committees, the main board, our board, and you know, so and so and so and on. Um, we all have like um, a barbecue with our families. Engage, so we know who's who and who's involved. You know, it's funny, um, our organization put on a street team barbecue and some folks from San Juan came out and that's how I ended up on the LCAP. I had never even heard about it. They came out to a community barbecue and told me about the why and that's how I ended up here, I swear. So I love that idea. See? <laughs> <laughs> I know Saul has to get out of here, correct Saul? I do and I just, can I just say one thing before I leave and uh, I, I just, I, I really appreciate the ability that you guys are able to look at yourselves and make comments, you know, and that, that's, that's amazing because a lot of people can't do that and to, uh, to evaluate, you know, how can we get better? And that being the case, what Tom said, if I could just pivot off him and I talked to Kim and Steve uh, earlier about this as, as I sit as a liaison and I look forward to doing this with you guys later that if I can just challenge you guys, as you guys make recommendations, whatever it is, if you can answer this question at the end of your comments, ideas, focuses, is how does that affect our kids in LCAP? Mm -hmm. Because I think that if, you know, because our, all the ideas are phenomenal. And if you let me be somewhat bold to be able to say, hey guys, that's a great idea, but it's not going to happen. It, in, and, and I'll give you an example. Since we're sharing, one, we talked about busing our kids, bringing busing back to our kids, okay? Mm -hmm. Guys, it's not going to happen in San Juan Unified School District. And the reason why is the funding that we get right now is we have to f bus our special needs kids. We get money from the federal government, and it's not enough. And, you, and, and some people say, well, you should bus underprivileged kids to go to a certain school because they don't have cars like other schools. You know. Well, that would be a great idea too, but guess what? We can't. We can't choose to bus one kid, high school kids, and not bus another. So to bus everybody, we would be negative $20 million in our budget just for bus. So you see what I mean? So I'm going to be a little vocal with you guys too. It's like, hey, that's a great idea, but that's not going to happen in our current situation right now. And if we could how, every idea, how does that affect our LCAP kids right now? Boy, I'm telling you, we're going to be going in on what this So is. can I um, piggyback on that? Because actually, Dolores actually came back in the house because one of her friends 
Um, she found out in foster care. And then I think another student um, got hit by a car, so they're kind of emotional right now, up and down. But she um, had some, I was telling Kim the other day, she had some good feedback. Like she wanted to talk, but she's kind of emotional as well. And I said, well, this is your time. Was, she was like, well, mom, can you say it for me? Um, like we have our CPS case open. And the thing that with this year, she was pissed at, at us adults because she's like, I was looking at her I'm like, what's wrong with you? And she's like, I'm so tired of you guys coming up with all these strategies, putting it on paper, but don't act on it. Yeah. And I'm like, I had to sit back and really like look at what she was saying. She's like, cause look at all the stuff that we're going through. And she said, like, mom, you're more engaged because you've been taking kids home and you hang out with us and everything else. And so I'm like, yeah, she said, look at everything that we went through this whole school year, not just our family, but just like a lot of families, yeah. a lot, a lot of families. And she's like, what's improved? Nothing. And she said, it makes me not even want to trust my trust. It's just, she's protecting it. Yeah. And she got her boundaries and that guard up even higher. Um, I was just telling him that I guess the engagement with um, with students, with staff and students, and the connectedness is not really connected because students are still vandalizing um, bathrooms. And she's like, Mom, she came home, she's like, we only got um, one bathroom now. We have four bathrooms, and we only got one girl's bathroom. And it's far away across campus. And she said, that is so, that's ridiculous. And I, I know that first beginning of the year, it was like one bathroom was vandalized, but now three. And she said, they're locked. She said, we have no access to it. And so just that feedback, it's just, I have to understand what she's saying. She's frustrated with us adults um, because it's like we keep putting stuff on paper. We recommend this, we recommend that, but nothing is getting done. Or we say, we'll put it on the next meeting. Yeah. And then the, the next meeting comes, we'll put it on the next meeting. But nothing of really of us seeing it being done, like visual, uh, let me see it being done um, or getting out to other families or making it really an impact because it's gotten worse. Two kids. Stephanie. Died. Yeah. I think that's a really good. Um, thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah. I think that's a really good. That was from Morris Menor, but yeah, she's dealing with another a, a, a student that got in foster care. So I was going to say, kind of going back to what Tom said earlier, if we could compare, we probably could see where we have had some things done and see what we have gotten done and where we still need room for improvement. Yeah. So, and then that's something that I think El Noria deserves to see as well. And thank you so much, Saul, for um, sharing that with us. That's why we're so happy you're with us because we want someone who is going to be straightforward and honest. Well, I, I, I will give you a straight answer. It may not be the answer we want to hear, but it will be straight. I promise you that. You. That's Tom. We've had many discussions like this. Okay. We appreciate that. I got to go pick up my kid at the airport. Thank All you, right. guys. Bye. See you next year. <laughs> okay. Bye. Thank you. Okay. All right. Were there any other questions or comments? And thank you so much, Heather, for that last comment, suggestion. Anyone else? Okay, so we're gonna be digging digging uh, more into this. There, there's so much that we want to do in um, just restructuring. I don't wanna hold you guys really late tonight. Um, I like for us to just get through this meeting, be done, end of the year is over. We don't have to keep driving our kids back and forth to school. Thank you, Lord. Um, so. <laughs> Anyways, the last thing, uh, the last two things on our agenda are um, just uh, the, um, our recommendations. And so this had to do with uh, us being at the board member, the board meeting the other night, and then our future agenda items, if, if anyone has any. So um, with our committee, I mean, with our um, recommendations, um, there is a link. Um, Laura, can you please pull that link up for me? And I know that everyone has, everyone in our pack has had access to this link um, because it is what we, it was in our very last meeting. So I sent it out to all of our pack members to be able to add to the list. Um, but I just wanna share it with you, what we had shared with the board. Um, and it's in that link that I sent. Did you put that in the chat box? Kim? I did. Yeah, I can, I can, I can put it. I just, pay, I just pasted it again. Oh, Thanks. okay. I, thank you. I was just getting ready to do it. Okay. So I just want you to review this quickly um, because 
uh, one of the issues we had in our meeting uh, with the um, with the board was um, I had um, shared with them. Matter of fact, I'm gonna just I'm gonna share that with you guys really quickly because I think it's only. Wait, probably. which one do I click on? Because Steve is edit and yours is sharing. No, Laura's gonna share it. Stephanie. Oh, don't click on it. No, don't click on it. All right. Yeah, I think but it's you, good. You guys to actually share. have that yeah. um, in one of your emails. Yeah, so let me go get an email. It's one of the emails. Yeah. All right. So I'm gonna share this with you with with our team tonight. What I shared with the board. And Laura, you can pull that up. Um, said I was born um, in the East Bay, grew up in a single family home, lived in poverty and constantly moved from place to place or live with other people. Both my parents had drug addictions. So by the middle of ninth grade, I had already experienced homelessness, living with foster youth. I mean, living from foster home to foster home and attending 10 different high schools with Mira Loma being one of the high schools. I only attended Mira Loma for one day because there was a race riot between white students and black students. The N word and all other types of words reverberated through the halls and tons of fear set in. So our mother picked us up that day, which was our last day. I joined the LCAP pack with the intention to share my voice to make a difference for this generation and the following generations of students in this district because I saw room for improvement. Because of my story, I felt many adults failed me from my home life to my school life. And I thought since I've had some of these experiences that I could share through a different lens in hopes of making a difference in the outcomes of students with the greatest disparities, inequities, and needs to help close the achievement gap. So when I saw that the LCAP application was seeking parents, guardians, and community members who represented English language learners, foster youth, homeless youth, and low-income students, I thought this is the committee I needed to commit my time to. I've been on this committee for four years, and in that time we have had, I said three, but it's been four, four different directors, many members coming and going with a very high turnover rate and a lack of participation from the members who are active. We currently have 18 out of 20 active members with two who resigned. We have nine out of 18 members with good attendance, and in our last meeting we were unable to make a quorum. Many members in our group have shared that they do not feel valued or heard by district leadership and that they are feeling a sense of burnout and untrustworthiness. I came in very optimistic, however, that has dwindled over the time serving as a member of this committee. And I contemplated quitting several times. However, I believe in our purpose and our function and I feel a sense of commitment to our team. Therefore, I've continued on with hopes for a change. Our committee is looking toward a future where we do not have a feeling of us and them parents and community members versus the district. We want to be able to trust the people we are volunteering for to collaborate, cooperate, and appreciate us. And then I went on to give the annual report of our committee activities, work in progress, we're seeing the issues, a summary of our recommendations, a recommendation for the continuation modification of our committee. And in closing, I quoted from President Barack Obama, if you're walking down the right path, you're willing to keep, and you're willing to keep walking, eventually you'll make progress. Um, and so that was to the board uh, that evening. Now, what came out of that was um, initially the board was uh, seemed to uh, accept what I had said and um, and gave appreciation and thanks. But shortly after, it it got very it felt very confrontational, and it felt um, as uh, and it felt a little dismissive. Um, and this was because John had given got up and given a report. And when he gave his report, um, he stated um, that we had uh, four, he said five members, um, and this had to do with us not making quorum. And, uh, and, then he, and then he went on further to discuss that we've had outside meetings and that we have had uh, about four people per each of those meetings, which is about right, different people, but about four pe people each of those different meetings. And so when the board heard that, then they immediately said, oh, so you've had only four people that came up with all these recommendations. And then I had to get up and clarify. So John stepped to the side for a moment. I got up, I clarified and I said, no, this was a collaborative effort with all of our committee members up uh, until the last, uh, after we didn't make quorum, we wanted to make sure that everyone had the opportunity to add change or do anything to the rest of our, um, uh, recommendations and this was okay with everyone in our pack 
um, who was who was there along with all of our leadership, and that uh, so it was the, all of these recommendations came from all of our members. This was nothing that just four people did, but it almost seemed as if they were trying to imply that there were only four members who came up with all these recommendations for the board. And so we need to go back to the Brown Act because we need to have better processes in place. And then you had one board member who brought it up, which was Pam. And then from Pam, it went to um, uh, McKibben. And then from McKibben, who was really upset about the situation, it went to, uh, I forget the- Paula, oh, Miss Viasca. Thank you very much, Paula. And so it was a lot of back and forth and it was a lot of having to re-clarify and clarify and clarify. And I was just think, sitting there thinking, you should know what the Green Act is. You should know that we have the authority to do this. And, and McKibben's uh, issue was that, well, under whose authority did you have to do this? And in reality, it was under their authority because they gave us the authority under the Green Act to do exactly what we did. But the implication was as if we need to go back to the Brown Act because only four of you made these decisions. And John tried to get up and clarify as well, but still there was, there was resistance. So can we still make quorum if, okay, like that last meeting, I so, did log in. And, so Stephanie, and, let me just, let me just yeah. share this with you though, is that all of those recommendations were recommendations that we made collectively throughout this entire process. Yeah. And from, and when I spoke with John about it afterwards, I was like, did we have to vote on that? Because the holdup was like, oh, you guys didn't vote on this. But John said, we didn't, and we never have voted on it. So this was just something that we put together and it's put together and it's presented to the board. So it wasn't even anything that had to be voted on. But at the same time, we are under the Green Act, which gives us the privilege to be able to come together, even if it is all of us, and share our thoughts and work um, towards recommendations. We just can't vote on anything unless it's within the public. So how do we do that? Like last meeting, I was logged in, but then my, my tech was no logging in and none of my devices logged in, but I still was trying to be engaged into the meeting. But like, can we still, I can still vote by text? I'll still communicating with you So guys. I'm gonna tell you something, Stephanie, we brought that up in the meeting yesterday to find out if there's a way that we can still do voting um, by sending a link and everyone, yeah. but, the, but the thing is that I believe John and John will have to take that over to legal to see if that's something we can or cannot do. Yeah. Cause I want to be engaged in everything. It was just, nothing was connecting. It's like, okay, dang, that kind of sucks. I'm like, are we going to make quorum if I don't come or if I don't pop up my thing? Yeah. Okay. Tom, you had a question. Thank you, Stephanie. Yeah. I just want to say since uh, at this meeting, We've we've had we have quorum, or and and now would it I mean, just maybe it would help the board <laughs> believe that these recommendations were by the whole committee. Can I make a motion now that we approve all the recommendations that you presented to the board, and that we go through the formality of taking a vote, so then it can be reported to the board that our entire committee voted on the recommendations that you previously presented and that it was you know, passed by, by our committee when we had quorum in a regular public meeting where the public was invited. So just to try and- Fortunately, Tom, uh, we don't have quorum anymore. Yes. Yeah, well, but we did have quorum. So I think once we establish quorum, we can still vote and it still holds because this was a meeting where we did have quorum. So for whatever it's 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 worth, um, I, I I think that we could do it now. And if it's if for some reason it's determined that it's not okay, then we can just revote, I guess, if we have to. Yeah, I mean, well, we're still here, so we do have quorum. So yeah, yeah. Well, Zena, Zena so we lost dropped Nina, off. Yeah, we but... lost Zena, Zena. So I think yeah. we're technically. Well, it, it, it at least can go in the minutes that we had yeah. quorum at this meeting and we voted on it. Yeah, there's no, there's no harm in the time that we voted. There's no harm in voting. I second that motion, Tom. We can do that. And if there are any discrepancies, we can hold it to the next meeting. And that yeah. will be when you are in uh in yeah, because we position, Steve. You said that something <laughs> was not left. <laughs> yeah. Well, I second that motion. 
And I, you know, I guess if there's no further discussion, then you can call the vote. But I do have my hand up on the topic before you vote. I'm happy for us to vote. And I, I just want to say for the record, one, Kim, thank you for sharing your story. And um, I'm sorry that you left feeling unheard um, and dismissed. I just want to hold space for that because that is a, a, a way too common of a shared experience when folks are being asked to participate and engage um, and the response by the folks who have the responsibility and the power to actually listen and make change. And that's really unfortunate. Um, and then I wanted to also say that, um, you know, with, with what I'm hearing, it makes it feel as though it's more important to the powers that be to have power and control than it is to um, create a culture of trust and mutual partnership and community-led solutions. Um, and, and that is really sad. It feels paternal and it feels oppressive. Um, and that has been my experience um, for the duration of my time in LCAB and a large part of why I'm on the fence about continuing and I want to go on the record for that because this is maybe what my third or fourth year now at this point yeah. Yeah. and I still have babies who are in this district and, and I've been very vocal about the fact that one of mine who was a graduate this year I had to pull out because she was a student of color experiencing overt racism and a bunch of other things on the campus and I felt like it was important for her um, and other students to have representation so we could figure out solutions to really no avail. Um, and I just think it's really harmful to people um, to be you to kind of feel like we're used transactionally. Um, and uh, it's it's really unfortunate. And I know you and I know your heart um, as a person. And um, that pisses me off. <laughs> but beyond that, it's it's really sad because um, there are a lot of amazing folks who have things to add. And I believe that our communities have agency and we don't need you know, systems and, and people who are paid who don't represent our communities to come and, and to, you know, breathe down our necks because you don't trust us because you want to maintain power. It's yeah. bullshit. Yeah. And so I will say less about that. You deserve better. Um, and we deserve better. You deserve better. Yes, I agree. <laughs> go ahead and get my snatch real quick. There you go. Yeah, that was frustrating to listen to uh, that exchange after us trying to present our recommendations and not having it, not see it, and listening to them not have a clear understanding of. of well, I'm so sorry. Yeah, you yeah all it was so frustrating. Value. And I say, let's vote on today so there will be no question. <laughs> is there another board meeting? No, we're done. There's, there's done right? we're, there is done. another board meeting on the 28th, and I am going to be asking all of you. Oh, can I come? <laughs> Everyone's invited. Please come. <laughs> 28. Yes. I say, I, I'm sorry, too, Cam. I tuned in and I watched your presentation, and I thought it was so touchy. I was like, this was amazing. <laughs> yes, and I must have logged off. I thought it went well. I thought it was well received. And then I logged off, and I didn't see this whole turn of events. So I wasn't aware any of that happened. It was after John spoke. I'm sorry. I'm really okay, sorry. I'm gonna have to rewind YouTube and see where um that's when they posted. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So we'll move on. Um I let's take our vote. Oh, okay. I was just gonna say, do you want to vote? So Tom made the first motion. Kim, you made the second motion. So let's go ahead and vote. So um Kim? Aye. Okay. Tom? Aye. This is kind of going out of order. Heather? Aye. Steve. Aye. Neelam? Aye. Stephanie? Aye. Sorry, Nora's coming. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll go on. Elizabeth? Aye. And Amber? Aye. And El Noria? Go, go. Okay. Yeah, she's right here. Okay. Talk to you. The board. Anoria, do you um, vote to uh, approve the LCAP my... PAC recommendations? LCAP recommendations. Yes. Okay. All right. So we have um, nine votes. 
Thank you so much. And, and we will get clarification. Oh, okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. No problem. And I don't think it was necessary for us to vote, but thank you everyone for participating in that vote. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, at the next meeting, you can report that we voted on it, uh, everyone that stayed. Uh, and if we didn't, uh, if we had quorum and at the time of the vote, uh, because some members, you know, dropped off early, then that's, that's, that can be reported too. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Absolutely. Uh, so does anyone have any future agenda items that they would like to put um, that we could put on our calendar for next uh, meeting, for our next meeting? Yes, I do. Okay. Go ahead, Stephanie. Oh, Lord. Here we go. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> I was um, yeah, so, oh, Lord, you already. Okay. What? what? Um, so for the next meeting, which is what date? It's uh, in August. Can't have one in J July. No, our next meeting is in August. Okay. Um, so our next meeting in August is coming up. So basically, um, I wanted to put on the agenda more so of everybody observing this summer on our COVID and then um, policies, things changing. If we have to have mass mandates coming back into school, um, as well as school safety. Um, because I know a lot of schools are starting to do training and safety for staff and students. So that's a one high concern um, of mine if we're looking into that. Because a lot of people have been pulling their kids out of school, um, per se. Because um, on the day of my son graduating, some, a kid threatened him with a gun. And I had a PD there. Um, and then my kid got defensive and everything else, and they almost he almost not walked. So, with that being said, school safety, which that's the reason why he kind of didn't come to school, and his attendance kind of dropped really drastically in the last since spring break, because um, he felt he was being bullied, and now then the kid threatened with a gun. So, school safety, um, community engagement, and um, our school lunch policy um, with Biden ending that if we're going to have to do a plan for that grant because i know that's ending with the COVID pandemic um and how many kids were affected how many kids do we feed during the pandemic grant that's going to be losing out that this time with if it ends as well as i think was the lgbt um, transgender um plan if we don't put that in policy that we'll lose our grant so yeah those four things that's it. Okay. And so Stephanie, I have update on COVID policy was your first one. COVID policy, um, okay. uh, the mass mandate. So uh -huh. yeah. Yep. And, and then, then school safety. Yep, got that. School lunch policy for COVID um, grant ending. How many kids are affected? Okay. And then what was it called, um, Kim? You, said the, you also said community engagement. Yeah, community engagement, so it was five. And then um, also the summer programs, how many students will be impacted by the loss of summer um, meal? Yeah. yeah, like most of all the pandemic grants is ending. So who's going to be affected? Our family's going to be affected. Um, and then um, the transgender policy for um, schools, if they if we don't put a policy plan together, they're going to lose their school lunch, the lunch grant. If we have to do something. Thank you, Stephanie. Those are all good. Um, are there any other recommendations? Okay. I guess I, guess I have one quick thing. I'm so sorry. No, um, Kim, I was sitting with what you were saying and what you even lifted about um, having multiple directors. And, and um, I think that that was felt not only at LCAP, but across the district. And Again, no one prepares for a global pandemic. Um, we were not prepared, but I think that the the transitions um, have impacted us in ways um, that have been just even like a double blow. I, I say all that to say that I wonder if we can explore how to create a structure um, or a system or a process in LCAP that is transition proof. <laughs> and I don't know if that's possible, but like, I guess taking some time to explore, um, 
you know, the impact of that or finding some way to short, cause that's a threat to our success. And we know that. Um, and so, and I don't have that solution, but I guess that that maybe is an opportunity there as we're exploring how to strengthen our outcap. Mm -hmm. I'd like to make a motion. So the board knows where we stand to keep John as our director for next year. If we want to get a second and vote on that, just for posterity, we can I do second that, too. that I'm tired of the changes. So I second that. I think we're serious about that too, Laura. We're serious. We want to vote on that actually. So who makes the first motion? <laughs> yeah, I made a motion to uh, officially recognize that the PAC would like us, to, uh, the board to keep John as our director for next year. Okay, and Kim, did you second that? I did. Okay, let me grab my list again. So Deborah's not here. Well, I'm gonna go through the list just to keep this on the up and up. So uh, Deborah's not here. Karen Brown, Kim, you vote aye. Okay. And aye, guys. Amber? Aye. El Noria? Laura. Laura. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just trying to get okay. her, just trying to take dinner out for me. <laughs> uh -huh. We're voting for a minute. I'll, I'll keep going and come back to her. Heather? Aye. And sorry, that's my fault. Okay, yes. Jackson and April are not here. Elizabeth? Hi. Uh, Chelsea is not here. Serena? Okay, Serena's not. Serena texted me a few minutes ago. She plans to say, stay, Kim, for um, just so you know. She plans okay. to stay for next year, and okay. she's so sorry she couldn't attend. Yeah, I think Tom yeah. let me know that. Sure. Okay. Uh, Tom? Where's Tom? You're, you're muted. Mute. Oh, you're on mute. Doors <laughs> right there. Okay. You're still okay. on mute, Tom. <laughs> Did you get her long yes. Up. <laughs> yes, a wholehearted yes. Okay, yes. Neela. Yes. Okay, Natalie, she's not here. Please. Steve. No. Yes, please. <laughs> Jacqueline, she's not here. Let me go back to you, Stephanie. Yeah. And El Noria. Yes. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I had to make it take dinner out. All right. So that's a unanimous to keep John as the LCAP director <laughs> or as the liaison. Okay. Okay. And I think that uh, that concludes our uh, meeting for this evening for this year. I just want to tell all of you, thank you so much for allowing me to be your um, chairperson this year. And thank you, Steve. I love you. <laughs> you are my brother. Uh, thank you so much. And Tom, I mean, everyone, Neelam, John, Laura, I'm just going to have Elizabeth, Melissa, uh, Heather, Amber, and all the other PAC members. Um, thank you all for just allowing me um, to be your, your chairperson. This was, a, this, was a, um, this was a great experience. I learned a lot. Um, had tons of struggles, but you know, when they're struggled, it always makes you stronger. So I appreciate that. And, um, and I'm looking forward to next year. Yeah. Cause you're acting like you're going somewhere. You ain't going nowhere. Well, I, ain't going nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I will be on the side this time. Thank you. Thank you, for, thank you for being in charge and staying at the home. It was amazing. I appreciate get, it. Get your Kleenex ready for August when we mm -hmm. say thank you. <laughs> listen, I didn't listen. I didn't give Tom a million, but I'm expecting <laughs> Right. Tom can't go nowhere either. He's, he's, he's a pack um, for life. Yes. Right, well, thank you well, I, yeah. if anyone wanted to say anything before we end the year, please feel free right now. Um, yeah, I just I want, you've done an excellent job, Kim. And I, this meeting, I feel it's, it's ending on a really high note and with a solid foundation that it really makes me optimistic and excited for what the LCAP is going to do next year with all these amazing people. And I feel that with you and Steve's and John's and Laura's leadership, uh, with everybody's leadership that you've built a, a really you know solid group of, of people in a real team that then can start next year off on a solid basis. So thank you so much. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate that. Thank you. We gotta have a Tom hotline, Tom 1-800. <laughs> Yes. No, it's it's mm -hmm. pre-programmed. I got oh, pre pre I'll, I'll be here for public comment, probably at every meeting. So. Tom blog. Yeah. <laughs>
Mm -hmm. Have a good summer, everyone, with your children. Um, the most important people in this world to us.